that if I can do it, anybody can do it. You know, you just need to have the right support system around you. And uh, you just have to have a good intent and a good heart and stay focused and be hardworking and dedicated. And that's all that it takes. Be courageous, be yourself and just do you. The Halal Food Podcast by Halal Run. The number one guide to halal eating options in the US, Canada and the UK. Welcome on our podcast. We feature inspiring and accomplished Muslims in the West from all backgrounds. And we talk to them about their lives and the halal places where they love to eat. Our guest today is Momina Basit, an Instagram blogger under the handle The Girl in the City, all dots between the words ending in an underscore. Momina is a fashion, lifestyle, and food blogger from the greater Toronto area. She talks to us and shares with us her inspiring story about how blogging gave her not only direction and purpose, but also her calling was found and she has had tremendous success. She has over 47,000 followers now on Instagram. It's an inspiring story and we don't want you to miss it. So let's jump over to the conversation right now. Momina, we're so excited to have you. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor. And before we jump straight into it, I really want to commend you for all your efforts from for acknowledging and recognizing the blogger community and for providing them with a much needed platform and exposure. So thank you so much. Yeah, of course. And look, we love what you and your friends and colleagues do uh, because... It provides an important function for us, right? For not, not just the Hal Run, but the, the community in general about, you know, what what's what to check out, what to do. There's a, we're living in a world of so many choices. And, you know, to, to have a, a trusted voice saying, you know, this is, this is what you should be looking at, this is what you should be doing, just makes life so much easier for the rest of us. So thank you for what you do. But let's jump into it. Let's talk about what you do. So um, you have tell you know tell us uh, you live in toronto right now but tell us sort of how long you've been in toronto where you were before that uh, and how you you got into blogging okay so um let's uh, start from the beginning i was i was born in uh, pakistan i was raised in the middle east uh, in kuwait uh, spent 15 to 16 years of my life in kuwait and then um we moved to Pakistan for my higher education. Uh, I did my bachelor's in biotechnology from uh, Punjab University. And while I was studying, uh, I got married. And at that time in my life, I was not ambitious at all and not driven. Uh, the only thing I wanted was to get married and embrace motherhood. And uh, touch wood, you know, whatever I manifested in life happened. And uh, it's been a blissful journey. But then many years later, there came a point in my life when uh, where I felt stuck. And um, I really wanted to break free from the shackles of my mundane routine. As much as I loved being a mother uh, to my beautiful three children, um, I, I just felt that, you know, I need to do something for myself. And um, I was always very social media savvy. And I uh, I had a knack for, you know, Um, So, you know, everybody around me would always tell me that, you know, you should do something, just make a YouTube channel or maybe um, become an influencer. And I would always tell them that, listen, there's so many people doing such amazing work. So what difference would it make if I jump onto the bandwagon? And there was this very young girl at that time. She was my neighbor. She said something that really hit me hard and stuck, you know, stayed with me. She said that, Uh, Momina, there's so many engineers and doctors. So why, you know, study and be one? So it it really resonated with that. I was like, yeah, she's right. So that is when um, one fine day, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I just, uh, since I was very familiar with Instagram and I was already, uh, I had an account, a personal private account on Instagram. I was I would treat it as a page and I was very, you know, I wanted it to be aesthetically sound and I would, I would edit and I would, and I was always, um, you know, uh, this neighbor of mine, she's 18 years old, by the way, and she would take my pictures and I would, so um, I was always treating my own account as a page, but then I moved to, I switched to a public account and ever since then it's, 
but also there was one thing that i had in mind that i knew that i was pursuing and following my passion and my dream but i always thought to myself that i need to if i'm putting my energy into something uh, with three kids i might as well make money out of it i'm not not just doing it uh you know as a side hustle or a side thing yeah well it's been uh, you know mashallah working great you know and and you blog across a, a number of areas right food fashion home decor so tell us about you know one day you you made the you know took the plunge and you started up a public profile but you know there's a there's a journey between that day and getting close to 50,000 instagram followers right and congratulations on on being close to that so um so so tell me uh you know how you got from point a to point b what do you think it is that you do that attracts such a large and and devoted okay so you know um i just personally feel that if you're true to yourself and if you're not faking anything so i have always been this person who follows uh, her gut her heart and i go where my heart takes me and there was a time you know see when you're starting out you you have a lot of background noise and there's so much around you and people telling you how you should be doing things and how uh, somebody else's uh, trajectory is and how you should be following a certain path uh, i remember when i started out uh, people had all kinds of opinion you know they would so you know i st- i started out with uh, doing barter with businesses and i wanted to promote businesses and I wanted to give a personal touch to my page so I kept it like you know I would model I would put up my pictures but alongside that I really wanted to make money as well right so I initially I started out with entertaining but uh, you know collaborations with businesses uh, in kind collaborations and then that and everybody who would meet me would say that you know your page looks like a, a fish market you're always promoting things you're always doing this I would like and and initially you know when you start out hearing these things can uh you know uh, take you back to uh you know what others are doing and all but then for some reason i have this personality i do what i want to do and i really don't care what anybody thinks or says as long as i am happy and it's uh, i i knew that i had a creative streak in me and i also know that since i have like my father has been a businessman uh for for 40 years now and i know that i have this business minded uh like i have a business mind as well so so anyhow so i i just try to balance out things and um so from the get go i was very clear how i want to take my page forward and um it's been it's been an amazing journey so you know i would uh, there was a time when you know i would go to other people's media events and i would be so much inspired and you know you meet such amazing fellow bloggers and you learn so much from them and then never had i thought that i will be helming uh, you know um, one uh, one media event after the other and meeting so so you know through this platform not only has it uh fulfilled my uh you know uh, this uh, i feel creatively satisfied but i also feel that it has helped me evolve personally it, there's been a lot of growth you know when when you're a mother of three children and you're a young mother and you're new to the country i moved here in 2014 while my husband had been living here for a decade so his exposure and everything was vast and i was i had a very although i was very confident all along but um i had a very limited social circle i still do have a very limited social circle but through this platform i have you know my husband he's he's been very supportive and he's truly the wind beneath my wings so he when i have these business meetings with people and i was a little shy initially yeah you know so my husband would always encourage me that you know go talk to them and have this one on one meeting with them and you don't need me it's okay just go and the trust he had in me and the confidence my father showed in me and all these things put together they really pushed me in the right direction so now i 
and through you know i meet people from different ethnicities and backgrounds and uh, i don't know uh, initially when i came to canada i had a very i don't know you know we have a very closed mindset we we are not very evolved but after meeting so many people i just feel that i have become very open and uh, and accepting and uh, so th- that has also changed in me so i think there's a lot of personal growth then professional of course it's evident everybody sees that but i think there's a lot of personal growth and um also you know there's something i feel that i've become very um i've become kinder nicer and calmer <laughs> for some reason i <laughs> mean and uh, yeah so i when i meet these people and i just want to help people when i see somebody struggling with so i've just started giving coaching sessions also because anyway anybody who would message me i would be helping them and you know i'm see quite honestly there are a couple of things that through my journey i've realized um people gate keep things okay they don't like sharing emails of brands they don't like telling people how they got a certain collaboration and it's fine to each is its own with me the thing is that there's a thing called tawakkal you know and this is what my father taught me that when you have tawakkal your strong faith in god that what is yours will come to you you are very um secure then you feel secure no matter what happens around you you know that you know i'm uh, following my path and i'm not like you know trying to pull people down and i'm always respectful and i'm always encouraging and you have this good will and good intent so nothing goes wrong within your uh, you know um life and um so i've always been very helpful but then i thought to myself that listen you know i'm taking out time and i really help people so i should do you know start giving these coaching sessions also where i also <laughs> get something out of it and uh, and help people also through this so i don't know how helpful it has been to others but yeah it's been great that's fantastic and that's fantastic to hear right it's always inspiring to hear about someone who hasn't done something before and then gets into it and and sees success right and that's that's what we're all about right we uh at halal run uh we like seeing and helping muslims in the west in north america and in and in the uk and in europe uh be successful and we like celebrating the successes that that we see people have um so you know along those lines uh you know you are a a very successful instagram blogger uh but one thing we love about the 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 blogging community whether it's food or lifestyle or anything is uh there are often these top bloggers are supportive of of one another so who are some of the other bloggers whether they're food or otherwise halal food or regular food or not even food at all who are some of the ones that you you know you admire or you check out or or you work with okay so you know when i um started uh, collaborations with restaurants and all so there were a couple of uh, food bloggers particularly that i really got inspired by there's munch halal um, so i don't so with the thing with me is i don't religiously follow people but i do keep a tab and i once in a while do check out uh, you know what they're doing and uh, so i really like munch halal there's this guy called um uh, halal or nothing imad and um then there's rad he just recently moved from dubai and i think his work is amazing and he's a really nice guy so um these are the food bloggers because i personally feel this this content creation it's very crisp it's very to the point and um they have a certain style and i really aspire to attain that kind of style because my videos they they're like never ending <laughs> <laughs> when once i hit the start button it never stops <laughs> so they they know when how to edit and how to you know um engage their audience and um garner that kind of attention and then uh, there are many other female uh, uh, you know food bloggers and lifestyle bloggers there's a uh, food delicious mom she's you know she's very inspiring the thing i like the most about her is that you know uh, she's she's her intellect so when you meet her 
it's not all about the page but when you meet her interact with her she's very knowledgeable the way she conducts herself it's very you feel that okay there's somebody in the room who's very knowledgeable <laughs> that is the kind of vibe she uh, gives and i really like that about her and then um okay so there's this um there's this lovely blogger called sidra in town i i feel i really like her style of creating content it's uh, you know when we all blo- are in one room the kind of content she uh makes is uh, really i feel okay we were also there but we didn't <laughs> capture that we didn't capture that so yeah she's very good and then um there many so quite honestly you know i have made everybody's my like i've made so many friends along the journey that it's very hard to pick a few and i don't want to <laughs> but yeah um apart from them okay you know there's this amazing um blogger in the us her name is mariam ishtiak um i just love her aesthetic and uh, her husband is also a blogger and they both uh, cook together then they have these uh, podcasts where they're discussing um you know but per- uh, issues pertaining couples and then they're also dabbling into you know motherhood and everything so i just feel her page is a package and see what connects with me is and i think with most of our audience is if somebody is being real and true to who they are and not trying to create a persona per se uh um so yeah so she is very relatable then there's this uh blogger called the pretty journey she is also in the us and uh her page aesthetics are commendable i just love Uh, she is a lot into fashion and home decor but yeah she is also amazing so um, and then in canada um urdu mom and then you know spice of adulting and nadia najib and uh, there are many others that i look up to you know sometimes what there are couple of things that i like about people sometimes you know the gear that they're using and the equipment they have is very refined and nice and and sometimes their content creation style is very inspiring sometimes how they conduct themselves and the things they they have to say uh really you know resonate with you so um and then you know there are many friend blogger friends around me if i start naming them the, the list is endless but yeah everybody see what i feel is there was a time you know once i sat with somebody and they were like every other person is a blogger now you you have a phone in your hand and you become a blogger i do understand that yes it's true but i feel that it is a creative outlet for many women and for somebody like me who 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 had no direction who had no ambition and uh who's now doing something on her own and trying to carve a niche for her own self try to make a brand i now can understand when somebody has a phone and they're trying to do something maybe it might not be the best equipment they, they might not have the best equipment they might not have the best setup not the nicest things to say not the nicest outfit to wear but i just feel that anybody whoever is trying to do anything in their little capacity appreciate it you don't you don't know how much courage it takes for th- for anybody to put themselves out there to do what they, you know to follow their dreams or whatever so i just feel that we have to we should be very respectful and kind to everyone who is doing whatever in their uh, little capacity that that's fantastic and those were an amazing list of of uh, of examples you know some have actually even been guests on our podcast imad has been and rumina has been uh and you know some of our guests when i asked them this question have mentioned you i mean you probably know anam rizwan who uh she you know when we asked her that question she mentioned a few in- including yourself and so it's just is great that you know that this is a creative uh community that supports one another um so shifting gears uh, a bit um momina um you know we're we're a halal food uh website and blog and directory and we have you know muslim canadians muslim americans muslim english guests uh from all walks of life right some halal food bloggers and some not including yourself right a, a lifestyle blogger and some people are not even you know barely on social media uh but doing different things but we all ask them in the city where they live what are some great halal spots to check out um 
and uh, we will ask you that as well. I, I'm actually coming back to Toronto for a visit in a month. Um, so, you know, in your current list of halal, you know, places that you like halal food of across different cuisines, um, what, what's, you know, what's on your list these days of like good places to check out? Okay, so as I told you that I lived, I spent a chunk of my life in the Middle East. So I really, I think I have that palette. So I, I really like Mama Fatima. The, the Turkish cuisine is exceptionally good. Uh, it's, um, they have an amazing variety. And then we have Aga restaurant. I think it opened this year or last year, but it's, it's too good. And, um, then the other restaurant that I have in mind is, okay, you know, there's this restaurant called Sultan Ahmed. It just recently opened in Mississauga. The th- see, quite honestly, all these Turkish restaurants have similar menu. But I personally feel that not every, there are many other Turkish restaurants that have opened in um, the GTA. But I personally feel that these are the three top restaurants that really hit the uh, mark yeah and then other than that if you talk about uh, burger joints then uh, recently I had a chance of trying out uh, gladiator burgers I think they were too good and uh, you know they have stack of burgers also <laughs> like they can go all out with their burgers and then they have these tiny burgers for, <laughs> for somebody like me also so they have an amazing variety <laughs> and then uh, b-boys B-Boys, I think it's a hidden gem. Not many people know it, but uh, B-Boys in Scarborough and B-Boys in Brampton. Exceptionally good burgers, milkshakes, desserts, too good. So, uh, and then there's Burger Block. You know, there's there's this uh, plaza in Mississauga. Uh, I call it uh, the Platinum Drive Plaza. It's, it is like the food hub now. It's, Every other amazing halal restaurant in is in that plaza. So if anybody comes to me, I direct them to that plaza. <laughs> and I'm like, if you want desserts, if you want burgers, anything, go there. So yeah, and then um, apart from that, see, the thing with me is that um, as much as I love and enjoy food, uh, I am very particular about what I eat. And uh, I really like... As far as the, you know, uh, South Asian uh, food is concerned, there are many amazing restaurants. And I know there are people who love kadais and uh, parathas and whatnot. Uh, So for that, I feel that, you know, we have kadai boys, we have kadai point. um, Then we have, I personally feel that there are different things uh, in these restaurants. For example, Firangi offers halal food. I love their tokri chart. I think it's the best. Then 3D Food uh, Street has the best faludas. So I'm into like street food. I don't know <laughs> what other people like. But I cannot sit and eat two rotis, two naans and uh, a kadai. I mean, I like to, I eat very less. And then, so I might not be the best person recommending food. <laughs> but yeah, these are a couple of restaurants that um, I really like. Great. Those are those are great recommendations, and uh, I'll be sure to check out uh, most, if not all, of them. Um, and so, what you know, one last question, uh, moment that we ask uh, people again, because we're about the community, supporting the community. Uh, you know, outside of food, outside of bloggers, are there? You know, we always like to ask: Are there one or two uh, Muslims in the West, whether it's the U.S., Canada, or the U.K., from any walk of life, in any profession? Uh, who you admire or you think are doing great things or serving as, as great models? You know, there's this uh, blogger called Living with Saba. Uh, she is, uh, she lives in the US and it's commendable how she r- is raising her children. I mean, I get so inspired. Uh, it's not just that how religious she is, it's just the way her children are I just, they're reading Quran, the the lifestyle that they're cleaning, they're mopping, they're helping their mom. She has, I think she has three sons and one daughter and they're all doing the dishes together. Uh, the kids are, uh, uh, you know, cooking with her and they're so respectful. And so I just feel that when you see her page, 
as a mom i go into mom guilt i'm like how is she able to do so much and you know it's very inspiring the way she and then raising children muslim children abroad is a challenge for many of us right and uh, we're always i think we are a confused generation i mean we are very religious also but we are a little modern and we're dwindling in between and then we have these little humans with us who you know we are we are responsible for and accountable to so i just i so i get really perturbed sometimes and i don't know what is the right way to go about so when i see these amazing women these inspiring moms everybody in their capacity is trying to do their best but when you see these uh bloggers such as you know living with sapa and how she is raising her children um it's it's commendable so i personally you know you mentioned anam rizwan i think she and there are some other moms also when i meet them in person because you know they're my friends when i meet them in person and they share stories and tell me how they are raising their children of course they're bloggers you know see half of my life i'm i'm a very private person so what you see on my page is mostly work and mostly me so i do not share my entire life on uh, so people don't know but yeah but when we meet in a personal capacity they share how they are raising their children things they're doing for them so that so i know who's it's all of them are just like truly truly inspiring so there's so much to learn from them and there's so much we uh, you know to better i'm nowhere close to <laughs> these exceptionally talented and brilliant moms out there well momina thank you so much for for that insight and also thank you for joining us today it was incredible to have you uh your story is very inspiring to me and to a lot of people uh and we really appreciate that you took the time to be with us and uh we we hope to have you again soon in the future inshallah you know the pleasure is all mine and i just want to say this out loud that if i can do it anybody can do it you know you just need to have the right support system around you and uh, you just have to have a good intent and a good heart and stay focused and be hard working and dedicated and that's all that it takes uh be courageous be yourself and uh just do you do what you know comes naturally to you do not follow any path do not follow anybody's uh you know uh listen but do your own thing listen to people around you advices around you and i'm sure they give advices with great intent but just do you <laughs> yeah see you soon shall thanks so much for joining us halal run is the number one guide to halal eating options in the us canada and the uk featuring over 17,000 restaurants in over 2,500 cities. You can find us at halalrun.com or on all our socials where we are at Halal Run. If you found this episode valuable, please subscribe so we can bring you more content just like this. We are here to serve you.